Uh, Italian logic. Return of serve is the most important shot. It's twice as important as the serve because you only get one shot at it, right? So uh, Rick and Woody are going to talk about the return of serve today. So I'll turn it over to you guys. All right, guys. Um, we are going to talk about the return of serve, and, and it is a different skill set. Um, it's something that you need to practice. Um, I remember uh, hearing about Andre Agassi, his dad bought a $10,000 uh, ball machine that could serve so he could practice his return to serve and he did have one of the best in the game. Um, it's something that, that uh, you need to practice because the technique is different. Um, I'm going to have Mark demonstrate in a, in a minute here but my, my mindset was I always wanted to keep the ball in front of me and it's, it's difficult if you're playing a hard server. Um, you know I played against Andy Roddick, I'm sure you did and guys that could serve 140 miles an hour. So what do you do? You can do two things. Duck. <laughs> Cover up your neck, number one. Actually, speaking of that, I remember one time at, at Key Biscayne on a second serve, Sampras tried to take Andy Roddick's serve early, and he hit a hard one and hit him in the nuts. <laughs> so you, you don't want to take the serve too early on a hard serve. But what you do, the two things you can do is, you can back up and get to the point where you get a, get a good hit, and then you take a shorter backswing, especially on the first serve. My mindset on the on the first serve was a shorter backswing, exaggerated finish. Um, if you don't finish your swing, you don't get your spin. So um, my mindset on the first serve is less backswing, more finish. Second serve, you can do your normal backswing because you probably have enough time to swing through and hit your normal shot. Um, your other mindset you want to have when you're returning serve is try to get the ball in the in the court, get it over. Um, I know the the uh, the older Australians would say they should never miss a return, and it's difficult in the modern game because guys are serving you know 140 miles an hour. But that's your mindset when you guys play is to get the return to serve in. Um, do you have any any thoughts you want to add? Yeah, I <coughs> just agree with what Rick's saying. That the closer that you go, that you're coming into the court, the smaller the swing should be. You condense the swing against the, the, the bigger servers. You know, if you're taking a, a full, you know, swing at the ball, the closer you come into the into the baseline, you're just minimalizing your opportunity or your chances to make a quality return. So it's, it's almost like compacting the return, soaking up the pace. You have to return with some intent and purpose. And, and certainly as, as Rick uh, mentioned, like a second serve, you know, Australians, uh, the mindset, was that you always had to make the return. Sometimes less is more. You don't have to hit a just a, a an outright ripping high quality return if you're returning a second serve. Sometimes just chipping the ball back or bunting the ball back into play. Less is more. I used to try to hit the ball because I wanted to have a, the highest standard I could, I could possibly have. However, if I was stretched, that's when I would slice. Um, the slice is a great return because you can hit a lob, and that's kind of a dying thing in modern doubles. Is nobody knows how to hit a chip lob. Um, you know, Todd did that very well. He can chip lob. Um, Leander Pays is one of the last guys that can still do it. He can beat the Bryan brothers because he could do that. So don't forget to chip. However, if I would recommend if you can hit the ball, hit it. Don't. Uh, uh, my my mind, mindset was hit first, chip second. So if you're really stretched, then you can use your slice. What's the difference between a chip lob and a standard lob? Uh, well, the chip lob you're gonna you're gonna go high to low. You're not gonna brush up on. So you're gonna you know you're gonna cut it, and you're gonna it, it's easier when you're reaching to hit a chip lob rather than a brush lob. Yeah, not many guys can lob off the return. Um, there was a guy named uh, Gomez that used to go to hit toss and lobs off the return. <laughs> but that, that's pretty rare. That's pretty rare. I'm Clay. You know, if, if they stay way back and maybe lob. That's, Usually you don't get the, the top spin lob on the return, you get the slice lob. Can you, can you speak a little bit to the setup? Like I see a lot of guys setting up with their hand, both of their hands on the grip. Other guys yeah. are having one hand up above. Well, the, the mindset is if a guy has a two-hander, he might wait like this. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm, I have a two-handed backhand, but I wait like this. It's just more old school, mm -hmm. you know? Um, one thing that, I have that's one a, hand, I wait like this. <laughs> yeah, no, you want to have your racket up because, like I said, you're trying to keep the ball in front of you. If you keep the ball in front of you, you can see it and you can use your opponent's pace. Mm -hmm. Keep the ball back here, you're not going to see it very well. So, um, another good point. You always you want to start your positioning. I'm going to have Mark demonstrate. But your pos positioning should be where the weight is distributed on the balls of your feet. And I like to be 
about shoulder length so I can change direction. I don't want to be too close because then you're wobbly. It's, it's like you're guarding somebody in basketball. You're going to be like this so you can change direction and get to either side. Um, if you actually, and if you split too far apart, so if you take a, a almost like a sumo wrestling position, yeah. it's actually once the ball is at a distance away from you, imagine trying to launch off of that. You're actually limiting, you, you know, your ability to make the return or get racker on the ball there. So, you know, at shoulder length apart. I also with the part. That, that's a you know that's a good point. I I kind of just wait neutral and then I switch to the grip. Um, I played the deuce court most of my career, so I would have to key on the backhand side because every righty had a good wide serve. So I would almost straddle the sideline, you know, the doubles line, and and take away their best serve. So when you're returning, guys, you want to take away your opponent's best serve. See what their tendencies are. I like to key on the backhand because everybody moves better than the forehand. So if I key on the backhand and take away that, you know, if they if they beat me to the T, then then it's too good. But um, you know, guys obviously on the pro level can hit both sides of the box, and that, that like playing against Mark was so difficult because he could bend it to the T, you know, I'd almost be behind my partner, and then he could kick it this way, you know. So if, if you're hitting both corners, it's very difficult. But look at your opponent's tendencies, take away that. Wait, wait was that grip you're saying? Um, no, I'm just saying key on it, so you don't get beat to that side. Is what I'm saying. If, if if you're returning a second serve, if you if you have a preference of a, your forehand's bigger or better, you're more confident with your forehand. On a second serve, as you're returning it, you might probably lean towards holding that grip, so that you're encouraging yourself to, to look for that big forehand return, or it could be a you know a, a, a backhand return. It's it's like a a preference, but when you you've got more time to return the second serve, so that's where you want to try and have play with intent and purpose. I'm I'm going to try and, and use my best return when you're returning a second serve. You want, you want to hit a couple? Yep. Okay. So um, first serve, Josh, you're not focusing on you know backhand grip. First, first serve, maybe if, maybe a little more neutral because there's less time, time for you to right, react. Right, so yeah, you yeah. want to be able to quickly you know change. Right. Just but on a second here, so serve, you, can, you, you might right you right might now. lean towards your more favorite mm -hmm. shot. Watch Mark. Watch yeah. Mark return a couple because he's one of the best. Oh, oh, that. <laughs> right. A lot of pressure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll watch. <laughs> He's warming. He's warming up. Hopefully, he's going to send down a couple of slower ones. So, you know, when in your in your warm up uh, as well, if you're returning serve, the first few, why not stand, you know, on the on the baseline? I think Rick and I, when we both played uh, singles and doubles, but we can focus on the doubles. You know, returning serve, a second serve, we might be a bit more inside the court. So, just trying to, you know, soak up the pace. Uh, go. Are you going to tell me where you're going to serve? No? Definitely <laughs> in the box. <laughs> okay. So, I'm not trying to do too too much. Again, the, 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 the doubles. You've got to remember you have a, a partner there. So I'm not trying to rip the return. I'm not trying to hit a, an outright winner. I mean, how often do you guys even at pro level, how many times do you hit an outright winner? It's it's not that often. So I'm playing. My my intent is to make a quality return, and then hopefully that entices my partner, who I've got a lot of trust in, to maybe make some moves. So I'm not overdoing the return. This is helpful. <laughs> but you're switching grips. So he's sticking it on the rise, but he's hitting it in front of him. So I'm standing, I'm standing neutral, and then just uh, as as I see the ball come yeah. off of the racket, I'm switching to my forehand grip. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Again, this is as like a second serve that he's hitting to me. So I'm, I really would prefer to be hitting a forehand. Backhand. See, he's automatic. That's why he has a nice house. More. <laughs> <laughs> 
if I'm hitting a backhand slice is just sending it back into the to the box over the off um, return and then there's that option of the lob that we were talking about which uh, I kind of used a couple of times in some of the matches uh, yesterday so I want to send it up I want to send it up high a lot of guys uh, today on the on the tour, Rick, right? They're standing with their dicks right on the net. So you don't have to hit a great lob. You can just send it up high, get them to back away. And as soon as they're backing off, if you guys are mobile enough, doubles is about taking the net. Doubles isn't about staying on the baseline back here. That's not attack, that's defense. You've played the offensive sh uh, return back over their head. If you can start to move forward, you'd say that'd be ideal for these yes, guys. I mean, sometimes if you have the mindset like you're gonna come in off the return, you hit it better. So uh, that's that's your goal. Good. I think that's good, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So um, just to, just to recap, guys. What do you want more? Oh, okay. One more for. Uh, <laughs> no pressure, Josh. That's without warm up. So, uh, to, to recap, remember you're trying to get the return of play. Um, I played an exhibition a couple of years ago, and, and uh, Emma was watching, and, and he came up to me and he said, "You know, you're you're playing all right, you know." And, and I thought I played pretty well, and he goes, "You only missed two returns that set." And uh, and I go, "Yeah, that's pretty good." And then I was playing with Matt Philander. And I started thinking about it, and I, and I turned to Matt and I go, you only missed one return. And he goes, yeah, but I missed hit another one. You know, I mean, that's how good he is. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, so, so you're, you're trying to make every return. You're not giving your opponent free points. And, and that's why these guys were so good when they played. They didn't miss any returns. So you get no free points. So uh, have that mindset and, and practice it. When you're, when you're warming up, the other your opponents are serving, hit a few returns. Anything else? You know, just ask ask the question. Ask the question by making the return. Again, that uh, work on that theory. Less <laughs> is more. Um, you, you know, probably all of us that the legends that are here have certain st certain stories of, you know, if they're they're maybe returning not so well, like dogs. Um, you, you know, a number of years ago, I had the opportunity to play with Stefan Edberg, and Edberg, I'm mean, a great singles player, just a champion player. But in this particular day, he was returning like a dog, just no returns at all. It got to uh, when the, our opponents were serving for the match and he just turned around to me and he said, I'm just gonna get the ball back in. And he started to make the return, but it was coming off the top of his racket. It's coming off the, he was just shanking it. But he actually got it over the net instead of just missing into the net or long. He actually got the ball back over and the opponents like started to get shaky because they were only four points away and they missed like two sitters right on the net and he came back and he said you, you know there it goes you just got to make the guys play you've got to ask the question and they ended up donating the match uh, the the breaker serve and we ended up winning the match as well so you know just just get the ball back over you don't have to play a high quality winner shot yeah, one other thing is, if, if somebody's serving a little big and you're not getting your money's worth, you're not getting good hits, back up a little bit. You know, find that area where you can feel like you can get a good swing at the ball. So, cool. That's about it, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Pretty good. Woodford Leach. What do you think, Matty B? <laughs> alright, I reckon. It's alright, I reckon. Alright. Now it's to the Haka. The what? <laughs>